use Green's theorem to compute the outward flux across the boundary of our two-dimensional region R. So let us begin by recalling that Green's theorem tells us that flux defined by that vector line integral over the closed curve C of the vector field dotted with the principal unit normal vector with respect to the arc length is equivalent to computing the double integral over the bounded region R, that connected and simply connected region R in R2, of the divergence dA. So, in this case, it's going to be easier for us to compute the flux here using a double integral. So, just for good practice, we can start by sketching our bounded region R in R2. Again, we have everything we need here, so if you feel comfortable, by all means, get started. But let's think about, so we'll say here is our, whoops, here is our y-axis, here is our x-axis, and again, if you have graphing paper, I encourage you to use it. So here our bounded region R is a square. Right, so it's going from 0 to so here is pi by 2 on our x-axis, and from 0 to pi by 2 on y. And the shaded region within this square is that region R, that connected and simply connected region R. And we're moving in a counterclockwise direction here around this region. So, again, our bounds are given to us. We can see that this region is bounded by x, where x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi by 2, and y is also greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi by 2. So now that we have our region here, we want to go ahead and compute the divergence to set up that integral. So here we are given that the f component of our vector field, it's actually, well, since it's not up on the screen anymore, let's keep in mind that we were given the vector field f defined by components y cosine of x minus sine of x in R2. So f is the x component y times cosine of x, and g is minus sine of x. And we're computing the divergence here, so we need the partial derivative of f with respect to x, which is just minus y sine of x. And we also need the partial derivative of g with respect to y, which is 0. So therefore, the divergence of this vector field, which is the partial derivative of f with respect to x, plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y, is just minus y sine of x. And so we have everything we need. We've got our bounds, we've got the divergence. So we can say by Green's theorem, we know that the flux here is going to be equal to the integral, the double integral over r, so that's from 0 to pi by 2, 0 to pi by 2 of the divergence, which is minus y sine of x. And then the order, because we're over a rectangular region, the order of integration isn't as critical. So pick your favorite. And again, because we have a rectangular region here, I'm going to separate this to two single integrals, the product of two single integrals. So I have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the minus y here dy, and this is multiplied by the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine of x dx. So we can compute each integral separately, you know, even to be a little easier on ourselves. I'm going to just pull that negative to the outside. Just don't forget it at the end. So let's think about each individual integral. I have the integral from 0 to pi of y dy, which gives us y squared by 2 from 0 to pi by 2. So this is 1 half multiplied by pi squared over 4 minus 0, which leaves us with pi squared over 8. So we'll plug that in, so that's going to be minus 
pi squared over 8. And now we also need to go ahead and evaluate the integral with respect to x. So that is also the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine of x dx. So we have minus cosine of x from 0 to pi by 2. So this is minus, keeping that negative on the outside, I have cosine of pi by 2, which is 0, minus cosine of 0, which leaves us with 1. So negative times a negative 1 is positive 1. And we can plug that into our double integral above, and we see that we are left with a beautiful final answer of minus pi squared over 8.